All right, today we're going to be making this fabulously simple and smooth lakeside landscape. So let's start by preparing our canvas. So first of all, click on your view menu and let's set this view to default. It's just going to change the position of this toolbar and make it very accessible to us. It's a personal preference, but uh, for the benefit of this video, if we have the same setup, it'll be a lot easier for you. <clears throat> Secondly, I'm going to open up this toolbar on the side called the Fill and Stroke menu. Just click this button and we'll have the Fill and Stroke menu at hand. We'll be using it a lot. So without further ado, let's begin making this. We're going to start with this background here. So using these zoom buttons over here, we're going to switch to our page and we're going to start with a simple rectangle. Now let's do a couple of things to make sure that everything's set up properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background of this box to this blue color of our sky. So if you are currently using RGB color, please find the wheel over here and let's set the color to our blue background. Just do your best to approximate. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the Stroke Paint tab and I'm going to make sure that that's turned off. So, turned on, turned off. A subtle difference, but it provides a black outline around the outside. <clears throat> so back to our Fill menu. Once we have our first color set, what we're going to do is we're going to create a linear gradient. And that's this button right next door. And so far we've created a gradient that goes from blue to transparent blue. So if we click on this color, you'll see our blue color. And if we click on the other, you'll see the same blue color, but it's fully transparent. So let's just have a look at this alpha slider here and slide that all the way up to opaque, okay? So we want this at 255. And we're actually going to just adjust our second color to a very dark blue. So now you can see we have a gradient going from a lighter blue to a darker blue. Our next step is to make this a vertical gradient. So we're just going to flip this around so that our color change happens from the top to the bottom rather than left to right. So looks pretty similar, right? Here's our background. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is start drawing some of these mountains along the back. So let's zoom in a little bit for this purpose. Click on your magnifying glass there and get a little closer so we can see what we're doing. So once you have this centered on your view, we're going to switch to the pencil tool. Now for the purposes of this lesson, we want these lines to be pretty smooth. This is our free drawing tool. So we're going to turn the smoothing on to about 45 something around there. And as we draw that will just simplify and smooth our lines a little bit automatically. So starting off canvas, we're going to start drawing these mountains. Okay. We don't want them to be too huge, so just keep keep yourself a bit under control. We're going to come all the way back and end here at the start. Now we've created this closed loop. That's our first set of mountains. We're going to fill this by clicking on the solid fill. So we now have this set of mountains all filled in. And we're going to set our initial color. I kind of want these ones to fade out a little. So I'm going to keep it fairly dark. So this is our initial color. What we're going to be doing is applying the same kind of gradient that we did to the background to our mountains. So we click the linear gradient. And we have transparent, solid to transparent but no line. So in order to get that line back again so we can change this color, you're going to come down to your toolbar on the bottom left and click the little more button and there you will find the gradient tool. And that gradient tool is going to provide us with this little line. Now when we click on the transparent end, we want to first of all make that solid and then we want to give it a darker color. Next, we bring that around to a vertical gradient rather than a horizontal one, something like that. 
Okay. Now our next step is to trim this off nice and straight. So if you look at our, our example, we've got this nice straight horizon here. So we're going to actually use a rectangle to trim this. So we're going to cover the area that we want to remove. So I'm just going to draw this rectangle across here. And you can move it or resize it until it covers the area that you would like to get rid of. Okay. Now holding the Shift key as I do this, I'm going to select my mountains again. And you'll see that they are both selected. The Shift key allows you to add to your selection. Once they are both selected, I'm going to go to the Path menu, and I'm going to apply a difference command. What that does is it cuts the top piece away from the bottom piece. So there's our first set of mountains there. Now our last step is just to get rid of this outline here. Okay, so we can click over to the stroke paint, hit the X, and the outlines will disappear. And back to fill. So let's do the next set. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's draw our next set of mountains, and we don't want to hide all of our initial mountains, so try not to get too excited with these mountains. Let's keep them small enough that we don't lose our background. Bring them back to the start. Once again, we fill them with a solid color. Select our initial color that we would like these mountains to be, and click on the Linear Gradient tab. Now to get that line to appear down here, using the gradient tool, we're going to select the transparent end, and we are going to make it solid with the alpha level slider, and give it a darker color. There we go. There's our second set of mountains, and let's create that vertical gradient. Looking good. There we are. Okay, now let's trim off the bottom of this once again. So let's cover it with our rectangle. Using our select tool over here, we're going to shift select our mountains and use the path difference command. Finally, let's lose the outlines here. Stroke paint off. So there we have our two mountains. Now let's add the third. So this will be my smallest. I'm going to go with something uh, more along the lines of hills for this one. They're going to just gradually lower into the lake. Bring it back to start. Okay, and we're going to fill this. So in our fill tab, and select our initial color. Click on the linear gradient. Back to our gradient tool and select our second color. So make this solid, give it a darker color, and let's bring that around and create that vertical gradient. And there we go. Our mountain range is just about complete. So let's cover over the bottom, and shift selecting our initial mountains here. So just these two are selected. We're going to do path difference. Finally, we'll lose this outline here. So under stroke paint, X. Okay, so this is our mountain range. So if we're pleased with that, we can move along to the moon here. So the moon is actually made of two circles. There's the uh, initial circle below, and then a blurred circle on top of that. So let's create our initial circle. As we create this, if you hold your control button, it's going to create a perfect circle. And so I'm going to give it a, a very light whitish blue color. Make sure it's fully opaque. And then I'm going to come over here and create a duplicate. Now you can right click on this and select duplicate. Or there's a button right here that you can press to duplicate. Now, when you do this once, it will appear that nothing has happened. But what you've done is you've actually created an exact duplicate exactly on top of that first one. So let's go back and move that back in place. So selecting our top duplicate, what we're going to do is we're going to blur the top one quite heavily. And that blurred 
circle is going to create that halo around our moon. Okay, so our mountains and our moon are done. Our next step is to group this entire area. So as you select, we draw a box around these things. What will happen is unless you completely enclose those mountains, they're not going to be selected. So starting way over here, we're going to draw a very large selection box that completely encloses those mountains so that we make sure to have all of them selected. We're going to our object menu and select group. Now this is one unit. So we're going to make one duplicate right here. So right now we have on top of our initial one exact copy of our mountains. So now the magic happens. We grab this handle and we pull it down and there we have our reflection. So with some subtle changes we can make this look a little more like a reflection. So we're going to start with a very mild blur and secondly we're going to make it transparent. So I'm going to bring this down um, this is a matter of taste, but I'm going to bring mine down around the 50% mark. And this is going to give us that nice appearance of a reflection in the water. Okay, so tune in for part two where we'll add the rocks down below and give our, give our image the lakefront here where we are standing and looking over across the mountains. So be sure to click on our next video to find out how. Thank you.